These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. When you're ready, what's the hybridization of this carbon? SP3. That's right. How do you know? Good. Except it turns out that we don't really want to count the bonds. We want to count the number of attached atoms plus the number of lone pairs. So how many atoms are attached to this four? One carbon and three hidden hydrogens. And how many lone pairs does this carbon have? Zero. Now why does that mean sp3? Well, this means that we should be hybridizing four orbitals. Well, here we're hybridizing four orbitals. We're hybridizing the three p orbitals and the s orbitals. That comes out to four hybridized orbitals overall. Good. What would be the hybridization of this carbon? Sp3. Because again, it has four attached atoms and no lone pairs. Two carbons and uh, two hidden hydrogens. Good. So let's figure out the hybridization of this oxygen. That's also sp3. That's good. How do you know? Um, because it has two lone pairs and two so there's four hybridized orbitals, the three p orbitals and one s. So the important thing you saw here is an oxygen with no formal charge has to have two lone pairs. You could use your chemistry skills to show that if um, you have two lone pairs, you would have zero formal charge, but you basically are expected just to have memorized. You they're not going to have to show, they don't have to show you the lone pairs. If they don't show you a charge on the oxygen, you're expected to know it has the two lone pairs. Good? What would be the hybridization of this carbon? Also SP3. Good. What's the hybridization of this nitrogen? SP3. How many lone pairs does it have? One. Yes, yeah, so there's three attached atoms and one lone pair. So again, that would be sp3. Again, you're just expected to know that a nitrogen with no formal charge has to have one lone pair. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Yeah, it might help to draw in everything this is attached to. This has two hidden hydrogens and a lone pair. Again, you could use your chemistry skills to see that a carbon with three bonds and one lone pair has a negative one formal charge. But it's better just to have memorized that a, this is what's called a carbanion. So we should just have memorized that a carbanion has to have a lone pair. So there's three attached atoms and the one lone pair. So again, there's four hybridized orbitals, three p's and one s. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Are you ready? Um, that would be sp2. That's right. How did you know? Because it has three attached atoms and no one pairs. Yeah, two attached carbons and one hidden hydrogen. And we're just expected to have memorized that carbocations have no lone pairs. So now we should only be hybridizing three orbitals. One, that, that one s orbital and the two p's gives us three hybridized orbitals overall. What's the hybridization of this carbon? It's really the same as this carbon over here. It's again attached to four attached atoms and no lone pairs. So there should be four hybridized orbitals. What's the hybridization of this carbon? SP2. That's right. How did you know? Because it has three attached atoms and no lone pairs. So we want to hybridize three orbitals, the two p's and the s. This is why we should not count the bonds. 
This has four bonds, but only has three attached atoms. So we count the attached atoms, we don't count the bonds. This counts as just one attached atom. Okay. What's the hybridization here? Sp. And that's because? Has two attached atoms. And no lone pairs. Again, we don't count the bonds, we count the two attached atoms, the carbon and the hydrogen. So we're only hybridizing two orbitals, the S and the P. What's the hybridization here? Um, SP2. How do you know? Because it has three attached atoms, the car two carbons, and the hydrogen. And mm -hmm. then it just has an electron. Yeah. So what, what do we call this type of carbon? A radical. Yeah, this is a radical. Well, that, that's the right answer. So this rule will still work. How many attached atoms are there here? Three. There's the two carbons and the hidden hydrogen. And how many lone pairs? Well, if you take a very legalistic and technical approach, there's zero lone pairs, because this is not a pair. That's the whole point of being a radical. You have an unpaired electron. So there's three attached atoms and no pairs. So that should give us three hybridized orbitals, two p's and the s. So this rule will also work for radicals as long as we only count actual pairs, not unpaired electrons. Or you might just memorize that radicals are sp2. Okay, well that's good. I think most of that you already knew. So it's good that you're comfortable with hybridization. You'll see a couple of questions where you have to identify hybridization on the exam. No. Now, this is the rule for hybridization. There's also an exception. There's certain cases where this doesn't work, uh, but I don't think those are going to come up until your second semester. So I just wanted to mention there is an exception to this, but you won't need to worry about that for your midterm. It won't come up until the next semester. For this semester, this should always give you the right answer for the hybridization. Okay. Um, if they were to ask, like, how many pi bonds are there, would that be, would you count, like, say it was sp2, would that be two pi bonds, or would that just be... That would be a good thing for us to talk about next. Okay. Well, if you have a single bond, is that sigma or pi? Yeah, that's right. A single bond. Is a sigma bond. Now, let's say you have a double bond. Well, theoretically, if we don't know anything about bonds, that could be two sigma bonds, a sigma bond and a pi bond, or two pi bonds. Well, do you remember, how, how would we apportion these? What, is, what, what type of bonds does a double bond consist of? Well, in that, I don't know, this is, I'm a little confused about this. Okay, well that would be a good thing for us to talk about. Yeah. Well, it turns out that you can only, you always have one sigma bond. Everything else has to be pi. Okay. Between, so between any two atoms, you always have exactly one sigma bond. Between any two bonded atoms, there's always exactly one sigma bond. Any other bonds must be pi bonds. All right, well, does that help us to figure out what types of bonds we have here? So that would be one sigma and one pi. Right. We know one of them has to be a sigma bond, and then the other one has to be a pi bond. What type of bond is this? Sigma. Because there is only one bond. What type of bond is this? Sigma. And here? Sigma. And this is sigma 2. And what type of bonds do we have here? Well, one of them is sigma and one is pi. It's completely arbitrary which one you label as pi and which one you label as sigma. If I had one and two, I could have labeled the bottom one as pi, and then the top one would be sigma. Yeah, this is good to talk about. You'll definitely see some questions about this. Well, logically speaking, we should go on to triple bonds. Well, I've already kind of mentioned the principles that would allow us to figure this out. If you have three bonds between a pair of atoms, how does that split up between sigma and pi? One sigma and two pi. That's good. Just using what I said earlier, I said um, between any two bonded atoms, there's always exactly one sigma bond. So any other bonds have to be pi bonds. What type of bond is this? Sigma. And here? Sigma. And here we have one sigma and two pi's. It doesn't matter which one you label as the sigma and which one you label as the pi's, but two of them are pi and one is sigma. All right, so this is a mechanical method that will always work for identifying 
uh, sigma and pi. So there's a good chance on the test you'll see a great big molecule and that has to be something like count how many pi bonds there are or something. That's the kind of thing you should be able to get full credit on if you've practiced that ahead of time, because there's a pretty straightforward mechanical method for determining that.